Hi, my name's Ed Banham Hall, and I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on the neurological examination of the lower limbs. To start off, it's always important first to wash your hands, and of course, introduce yourself to the patient. Here, I've got helping me today, my colleague Francesca. Hello, Francesca. My yes. name's Ed Banham Hall. Would you mind if I examine your legs? No. In addition, uh, it's important to ask the patient if they've got any pain or discomfort because, of course, you want to avoid your patient becoming uncomfortable during the course of your examination. Francesca, have you got any discomfort in your legs? No, I don't. That's great. Really important thing to complete is a visual survey of the patient and the surroundings in the bed area. It's important to look all around the bed space, okay? There may be uh, walking aids or orthotics, perhaps a walking stick or a walking frame, all of which could give you a clue as towards the pathology that you're expected to detect. In this case, there are none. The examiners should leave something visible, but they may not make it completely obvious. Okay. After you've examined the bed space, take a careful look at your patient. Uh, Francesca, I'm just going to ask you to relax, so just let me move your legs for you. Okay, there we go. Okay, at this stage I normally test clonus by uh, gently uh, relaxing the ankle and then rapidly pulling back. One to two beats is normal, but if you feel several beats that can be a sign of an upper motor neuron disease. Um, it's possible you could, examine, uh, could observe some muscle wasting or perhaps some fasciculation. Either of these things could give you a very good clue as towards what the pathology might be. You may also observe some scars uh, in the leg or, or someplace else. Okay. In this case, there's nothing to see. I'm now going to examine Francesca's leg power. Francesca, please could we start off just by lifting your leg here up against my hand as hard as you can. That's good. Okay. And on this side also. After testing each leg, it's important to remember that you should alternate testing muscle groups first left, then right, rather than going all the way down one leg, then the other. So here we go. Um, this time, Francesca, I'm going to ask you just to push down hard against my hand. That's good. And the same on this side. Push down. That's good. Okay. Next, please, could you bend your knees and bring your heels in towards your bottom? That's great. Okay, I'm going to test the strength this time, just pulling your heel in towards your bottom, hard as you can. That's good. And same on this side. Thank you. That's good. And just push away here. Push harder if you can. That's good. And here. Push hard. That's good. Straighten your legs out for me, please. Okay, so what am I doing? Holding the ankle. Uh, okay, yeah. all right. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Francesca, could you lift your foot up against my hand like that? That's good. And here? That's good. And push down. That's good. Push down. Thank you. And push down with your toes now. And with your toes. And push up. That's good. And push up. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, uh, if it's okay, Francesca, I'm just going to test your coordination. Mm -hmm. This is a crude test at the best of times when testing coordination in the lower limbs. The only real way to do it is by doing a heel uh, shin test. There's nothing that's really particularly sensitive for coordination in the limbs until we get to a later point in the examination where we're going to examine the patient's gait. Okay. Francesca, please could you take your heel here and just put it on your knee and then slide it down your shin for me. That's great. Thank you. And repeat that with the other leg. Next, we're going to examine the patient's reflexes. So we're going to start off with their knees. Uh, we're going to hit the patella tendon to elicit a knee reflex. Okay. Francesca, just let me lift your knee. That's great. And let me support the weight there. That's good. Now, I'm going to do that again. There we go. Okay. We're going to test the ankle reflex. The simplest way to do that is to simply extend the foot and hit just below uh, the toes. Okay. That's good. Francesca, this might feel slightly uncomfortable or perhaps ticklish. I'm just going to scratch under your foot uh, with a slightly pointy end of this tendon hammer. To test the plantar reflexes, it's important to pass the implement up the outside edge of the foot. And what you're inspecting for is the first movement of the great toe. And because Francesca has neurologically normal legs, her toes pass downwards. 
so that's normal. Next, we're going to test the sensory modalities. That's uh, light touch, pinprick, uh, then vibration sense and joint position sense. In your exam, you're quite likely to run out of time. That's quite well understood by the examiners. It's very difficult to fit all four modalities in the space of six minutes after you've done a motor assessment. They may just stop you or ask you to move on uh, if you're pressed for time and if they feel you've been moving forward at an otherwise effective speed rate. For the purposes of this lecture though, I'm gonna go through all four modalities for you. For starters though, it's best to kick off just by checking your patient uh, understands what you're going to be testing and can feel light touch. We're gonna to do that. Francesca, do you mind just lowering the top of your shirt? I'm just gonna tap this just on your uh, below your neck there. Does that feel soft? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on your legs. Okay. So I'm going to compare both sides and just tell me if it feels normal. I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay. So can you tell me, does that feel soft? Yes. I'm going to test that throughout your legs and just say yes every time you feel it. If it feels abnormal at any point, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Next, we repeat that using the pinprick. Francesca, if it's okay, I'm going to repeat that sensory testing with a pinprick. Don't worry, it won't make you bleed. I'm just going to ask to start. If you could lower your, the top of your shirt again. Tell me, does this feel sharp? Yes. Okay, I'm going to do the same testing on your legs. Uh, it should feel sharp everywhere. Just tell me if, it, if you can't feel it or if it feels different. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. The next step is to test vibration sense. As with the upper limbs, it's best to start distally, and it's only really necessary to move proximally if the patient can't feel uh, vibration sense distally. If it's normal, distally just stop there. Francesca, we're going to do the same thing again, only this time you should feel buzzing. I'm just mm -hmm. going to test it up here again first, if that's all right. Can you feel that buzzing? Yeah, I can feel it. Okay, I'm going to do the same on your legs now, okay? So, can you feel that buzzing? Yeah. And there. Yeah. If the patient can't feel the buzzing, it's important to move proximally. I'll just demonstrate that now. If the patient is unable to feel vibration sense at their toe, you can move up the leg by first testing the ankle, then the tibial prominence, then the patella, and then finally, the anterior superior iliac spine. The final sensory modality to test is, of course, joint position sense. So it's best to demonstrate this to the patient first and start off with their toes by explaining what you're going to do. Okay, and we're going to do that now. Francesca, I'm just going to move your toes for you. Okay, so this is up and this is down. Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do next is just shut your eyes and tell me which way I'm moving your toes, okay? Up, down. Okay, and we'll do that on the other foot now. Down, up. It's good practice to hold the toes from both sides rather than above and below because this way the patient is truly, you're truly testing joint position tent sense rather than where the force is being applied from, which is really a different sensory modality. The final and often one of the most informative parts of a um, lower limb examination is to assess the patient's gait. It's important to assist them off the couch if they have any difficulty with the mobility at all, uh, and then watch them walk up and down. Often this will give rise to some clues that the rest of your examination did not. Okay, so we're just going to do that now. Francesca, I'll just come around the other side of the couch, help you onto the floor and ask you to take a few steps if that's okay. all right. All right, do you want to swing your legs down? Okay, and carefully step down onto the floor. Do you normally use a stick or a frame? No, I don't. 
Wonderful. If it's okay, can I ask you to take a few steps up and down in front of the couch there? Thank you very much. I'll ask you to go heel toe as though you're walking on a tightrope. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Could you turn around and come back doing the same thing, please? That's great. Thank you. We're next going to test Romberg's, which is essentially a good way of assessing your patient's balance, okay? Because the patient stood up anyway from having their gait assessed, this is a good point at which to do this test. So I'm going to start off. Francesca, could you close your eyes for me? Going to give you a very gentle push. Don't worry, I won't let you fall over. Okay? That's good. Okay, thank you. And you can open your eyes, have a seat. Finally, depending on your findings up until this point, it may be worth examining the patient's lower back. For example, if you've identified a spastic paraparesis or similar pathology, occasionally patients may have a scar in their lumbar region and it would be worth your while to inspect that area to see if you can find any evidence of prior surgery. Then, uh, to complete your examination, it's important to thank your patient and assist them to uh, get dressed again. Thank you very much, Francesca. Thank you. Then turn to face your examiners and present your findings.